What is up guys and welcome back to the raid show legends video with me the real deal so today we are going to be looking at one of my favorite champions um she's a real game changer so if you pulled her big congrats it's none other than elva autumn bottom so she is an amazing champion she's great for hydra doom tower bosses doom tower waves um dungeons and also she's oh, sort of above average for arena but she can be really useful in arena Great for countering Tormen and Hegemon. And basically like an upgraded uh, Sky Touch Shaman. But uh, we'll talk about PvE first and then we'll talk about PvP. Um, so for um, PvE, I've got a regeneration set. Um, because basically in Hydro, she's solo carrying my team. So she's doing all the healing, but we need to keep her alive. So that's why she's in a regen set. Um, but then protection's really nice as well because you get that extra resistance and that extra HP. Plus... I had some really nice uh, triple rolls on some of this gear. Uh, substats you want to be looking for are speed, HP, defense, and resistance. Uh, gloves have got HP percentage, resistance on the chest, speed on the booties, uh, defense on the ring, HP on the amulet, and then resistance on the banner. So total stats, we are rocking 67k HP, 3k defense, 279 speed, uh, and almost five, 500 resistance. So speed's really important. You do want it to be fast because of her cooldowns are like her A3 and A2 are both on three turn cooldowns. So her being really fast really means that you can cycle for her abilities and just get through her abilities really quick. So this is the PvE build. If you were going to build her for um, Arena, I would say that a bolster set would be really good on her if you want to go, go second team. Um, immunity would be really good if you want to go sort of first. Um, stone skin would be good for stone, uh, go second as well. And immunity is good for go, uh, go second as well. Um, and also you could build a like high resistance. So the stats would, you still want it to be pretty fast, um, but she could be a little bit slower and you could focus more on resistance, but you still want her HP and defense to be nice and high for arena. Um, skills, you only want books in your A2 and your A3. Um, A1, you don't want any um, books in there. So I got very lucky there. Um, so passive, it's a bit like Seal of the Drakes. She will heal each ally by 10% of their max HP at the start of their turn. That's a really strong ability. Um, but then also she places a perfect veil on the ally with the lowest HP at the end of her turn. So say you're in arena, for example, um, your nuka, their HP is dropped. She will put perfect veil on them, which means they can't be targeted. She'll heal them back up and they can still keep continuing to knock out the enemies on the other team. So really, really strong ability. And just and also great for PvE as well because it means that they can't be targeted, but also perfect veil reduces AoE damage as well. So this is one of her really strong abilities, A3. Um, she's probably I would say probably top three revivers in the game. Well, single target anyway. Um, but so basically single target revive, um, forty percent HP, but also fifty cent turn meter. So that means that there's a good chance um, once they've been revived that they'll get to go again. But she also places increased defense as well, which gives them that survivability and also uh, increased attack as well, which is nice. But it's on a three turn cooldown. And the way we're going to build her uh, when I show you the masteries is that she cycles really quickly for her abilities. So if they do die again or someone else is dead, she can just cycle through and pick them back up one by one. Um, A2 is cleansing. So this is why she's like Sky Touch Shaman, um, but I'm definitely an upgraded version. Um, but yeah, so when fully booked has 100% of cleansing all debuffs from allies, but also places block debuffs and increased speeds as well. Really, really nice. So this is really good to counter Tormen, Hegemon, and just anyone else that's going to throw debuffs on us as well. So she's got a really nice A1. And the reason she doesn't need books in it is because it's all about her damage. Um, she's a support champion, so she's not going to be doing that much damage. Uh, but this continuous heal buff for two turns is really strong. And it's going to be on the ally with the lowest HP. But because um, she's so fast, especially on Hydra, she's going to be chucking out these um, continuous heals on all your allies. And it really does keep your team topped up. So strong, so strong. Um, so for Blessings, um, so for um, PvE, I'd recommend Lightning Cage and uh, Warden of the Fallen. Uh, for Arena, you could take Lightning Cage again. Um, Intimidating Presence as well, if you don't already have that on your uh, on your team. Temporal Change as well, so if you want to cut in 
um, and then cleanse your team as well. That can be really useful. And then also polymorph, polymorph would be really good on her as well for um, arena as well. So masteries, uh, these masteries could be really good for arena as well. Um, but you know, you could take slightly different masteries and take and uh, not fearsome presence, uh, unshakable to just get extra resistance. But this, the reason I really like this one is basically we've got loads of healing. Um, and then we've got Laura Steel just for a bit of extra stats. Everlasting, uh, sorry, Lasting Gifts is great as well because it means that it's going to extend our um, buffs. But it's all about that timely intervention. So timely intervention, basically, um, whenever someone's, one of our uh, colleagues, one of our allies, uh, HP drops below 25, our turn meter can be boosted by 20. So that means we can cycle through our abilities really quickly, um, do some healing, bring people back from uh, back to life, and so it also pairs up really nice with rapid response as well. So because she throws out loads of um, buffs, basically whenever a buff um, expires, she's going to have a 30% chance to increase her 10 meter by 10%. So that's really good as well. And then in defense, just taking some resistance. Um, also just increasing healing as well that we receive. Um, blast proof, just to rec uh, reduce any AOE damage received. If you were going to build a for arena, I'd definitely recommend taking improved parry for um, reducing uh, critical hits on us as well. And then just very standard stuff, uh, just all survivability, and then we just want cycle revenge, basically just more um, being able to cycle for our abilities as well. So just really keeping our turn meter really fast. And yeah, it's this is a real solid, solid build. So we've looked at our masteries, uh, let's hop into the dungeons. So you can use her in Ice Golem. I'd definitely say um, I'd use her for stage 24. You could use her for stage 25, but it's going to be a much slower run. And because of stage 24, because of that affinity uh, matchup, she can use that in advantage. So you could use her for 25, but I'd say use her for 24 and stage 20 instead. Um, Dragon is just super easy. And, you know, she'd definitely be able to do even stage 25, even with the bad affinity matchup. The only dungeon that she's not great in is, um, I'd say, Fire Knight just because she doesn't have a triple hitter. Um, spy, um, I do use her in um, stage 25 spider though. So I'll quickly show you that run. So this is my spider 25 team comp. And we've got two Sissiers, two Cold Hearts and Elva. I know it's not very free to play friendly, but you can replace the Sissiers with just two other HB burn champions. Ideally, one of those champions would have some form of CC to help you control the spiderlings. Um, you do need the cold hearts though, just for that turn meter manipulation for the spider boss. Um, but yeah, Elva's doing a lot of work for us here. So basically she's keeping the cold hearts alive with the continuous heals. Also that perfect veil helps with survivability as well. So they can't be targeted when the HP drops. And if they do die, you know, she is going to revive them as well. So they can carry on doing their job. Um, and yeah, it's just so solid. Like I know that I could do this in, you know, a 20 second team comp with two CCs. However, it's not a hundred percent success rate where this team is. So, you know, one minute, 40 seconds, that is still really fast. Um, and it's still going to be doing a lot for you. So we've just taken a big hit from the head of Raph, um, and it's killed three of our teammates. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place very quickly. So you can see we've just picked up CCR and we're just going to control the heads. We're just going to keep going through and basically we just need um, Elva just to cycle for her abilities and then pick them up one by one. But you got to think this is amazing that early on, you know, we dropped. Unfortunately, we got a bit of bad RNG and um, we didn't manage to have um, decrease attack and block debuffs on the head of Wrath. So that's why everyone dropped. But Elva is still able to come in clutch and just pick up everyone one by one. And, you know, that is pretty amazing. And we still get the one key as well. So, yeah, still just sort of getting around, still cycling around. And any moment now, Elva's going to come in and also pick up Husk as well. So, yeah, just need to cycle for abilities one more time. And, yeah, and then we're good to go again. But, um, yeah, so solid, like unbelievable. So, there we go. So she's managed to pick up the whole team, even though they've all died. So I'm just going to skip ahead to the end just to show you that we still managed to get the one key as well. And, you know, we're still pretty healthy as well. So I could have pushed this a lot further. Um, so I'm just going to show you my best score as well on uh, Hydra Brutal. So this is my uh, best score on Hydra. And as you can see, 72 mil on Brutal. Not bad at all. 
especially as free to play. Um, but yeah, we even had a bit of RNG here as well. Cantra died about 50 million and she's really important to Hydra because obviously she's bringing provokes for the head of cleansing. Um, she also throws up block debuffs as well and also decrease attack as well. So we were sort of missing a lot of abilities when she dropped. But we still managed to get 72 mil and a lot of that is down to Elva. She is doing so much for us. Because then we'll see she's almost done 6 million healing solo. She's the only healer on this team. Um, of course, we are getting a little bit of healing from Nekma as well, from um, Leech. But otherwise, it's all Elva and it's all off her back. So this is just this is just show you how strong she is. Okay, so we're going to go up against this bomb team comp with Michelle, um, who okay, you guys must know that Michelle like really annoying with all his fears. And we're just going to cleanse all of that if they cut in. Nope. But we're going to protect ourselves with block debuffs. So anything they do to us is just going to be completely useless. Umbral's going to come in. She's going to provoke them all. And then Constantine's going to finish them all off. And that is game set and match, my friends. Okay, so the enemy team is really strong here. They've got Tormund and Hegemon, who are just a massive pain in the arse. But we're going to try and counter that with our Hegemon. But we're also going to use Elva to cleanse. Um, I think my Elva doesn't have enough... Um, resistance to be honest but hopefully it's just enough just to get us through the first bit so we're going to push back Tormund's um, turn meter we're going to cleanse then our Trunder's going to go and that's it we are going to wipe the floor with them we just want to push back uh, Trunder's turn meter we need to control her at the moment boost our turn meter and then we'll go again with our Trunder and that should hopefully be the end of the game so come on, Trunda, show us what you're made of. Nice. So that's another W under our belt. And yeah, just need to quickly finish this off. So last but not least, we're going to have a look at Hell Hades' website and see what Doom Tower bosses she can be used on. Uh, Magma Dragon, 100% yes. Frost Spider, yes. Nether Spider, yes. Scarab King, I would say no. Um, Eternal Dragon, yes. Um, Griffin, yes. Dreadhorn, unfortunately, no. And Dark Fate, you could build a team around her, but probably best not to. There's definitely better options out there. So that is the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. It helps my channel grow and it motivates me to make more content for you guys. And I'll see you in my next video. Peace!